When Hollywood became the capital of movie making, it was only a matter of time before an organization was formed to recognize the achievements of those both in front of and behind the camera. The organization that would be formed would be known as the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. They would begin an annual ceremony known as the Academy Awards, or as others would call it, the Oscars. In this video, we'll take a look into the history of this organization and its ceremony, from its beginnings to its controversy. As always, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Also, please support us on Patreon to help us put out more great content. All of these links will be in the description box below. Without further ado, I'm Big Rob, and here is a look into the history of the Academy Awards. Enjoy. The history of the Academy Awards can be traced back to MGM head Louis B. Mayer, who wanted to create an organization that would mediate labor disputes without unions. He thought this would improve the industry's image. After meeting with actor Conrad Nagel, director Fred Neblo, and Fred Beetson, whom was the head of the Association of Motion Picture Producers, they decided to form an elite club that would have an annual banquet. Interestingly enough, there was no mention of awards being given out at this banquet during their initial talks. In the end, Mayer brought together 36 people within the industry at the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles. After explaining his idea to everyone, they all agreed and each person became an official founder of the Academy. Among these names were actors and actresses like Harold Lloyd, Douglas Fairbanks Sr., and Mary Pickford. There were directors like Cecil B. DeMille, Fred Neblo, and Raoul Walsh. Two lawyers, Edwin Loeb and George W. Cohen, were also founders. Producers like Louis B. Mayer, Irving Thalberg, Harry and Jack Warner were also among this group. There were technicians like Cedric Gibbons and screenwriters such as Benjamin Glazer and Jeannie McPherson in this 36-person group. There isn't enough time to list every name, so I encourage everyone to look them up. You may be surprised at whom you find. In 1928, Plans were made to present awards to a select group of individuals for outstanding achievements in film and acting. Initially, they decided upon 12 categories, and on May 16, 1929, the first Academy Awards were held at a private dinner banquet at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. Interestingly, the winners were announced to the media three months prior, so everyone knew who would win which is probably why the ceremony only lasted 15 minutes. On the Academy's website, there's an essay that gives a summary of its history, and it points out something interesting about the practice of announcing the winners in advance. It says, and I quote, For the next decade, the results were given in advance to newspapers per publication at 11 p.m. on the night of the awards. But, in 1940, much to the Academy's dismay, the Los Angeles Times broke the embargo and announced the winning achievements in its evening edition, which was readily available to guests arriving for the event. As a result, the Academy adopted the sealed envelope system the next year, and the system remains in use today." Unquote. I want to go back to the first ceremony for a moment. The awards given were to those who had outstanding work during the 1927-28 year. Wings became the first film to win Outstanding Picture, which would later be renamed to Best Picture. It also became the only fully silent film to ever win the award, and the second film to be silent in general until the 84th Academy Awards in 2012 when The Artist won. During the first awards, there were no categories for supporting actors or actresses. Best Actress went to Janet Gaynor, amazingly for three films. These were Seventh Heaven, Street Angel, and Sunrise. This would be the only time that stars would win for multiple films. Best Actor went to Emil Jannings, the only German actor to win the award, 
someone whom you may not have heard of before. This is because the Academy has chosen not to speak of him, because four years after he was presented with the award, Jannings began making Nazi propaganda films for the Third Reich. I read that the original winner of the award was German Shepherd Rin Tin Tin, who was one of the biggest stars in Hollywood at the time. However, since the Academy felt that people wouldn't take the award seriously if a dog won it, the Oscar went to the human runner-up, though I'm sure after 1933, they wished they had given it to one of the other men nominated. The Oscar statue itself was designed by MGM art director and production designer Cedric Gibbons. As a founding member of the Academy, he designed the statue and tasked George Stanley with sculpting it. Cedric Gibbons would go on to be nominated for the Oscar for Best Production Design, later renamed to Best Art Direction an incredible 39 times, winning 11. His 11 wins were for the films the Bridge of San Luis Rey, The Merry Widow, Pride and Prejudice, Blossoms in the Dust, Gaslight, The Yearling, Little Women, An American in Paris, The Bad and the Beautiful, Julius Caesar, and Somebody Up There Likes Me. An organization such as the Academy is not without its controversies, however. The group has been accused of favoring certain films that may not have been popular with audiences, but show a level of prestige in their presentation. This has become known as Oscar bait. Another controversy is the historical lack of diversity in many categories. Actress Hattie McDaniel became the first black performer to win an Oscar when she won Best Supporting Actress for Gone with the Wind. Unfortunately, she was racially segregated from her co-stars, given the racist nature of the U.S. during this time period. Her friend and co-star Clark Gable almost did not go to the premiere of Gone with the Wind because he hated the fact that McDaniel was not allowed to attend simply because she was black. Amazingly, it was actually McDaniel that pleaded with him to go. The two would remain lifelong friends. I sincerely hope I shall always be a credit to my race and to the motion picture industry. My heart is too full to tell you just how I feel. And may I say thank you and God bless you. In the years since, diversity in the Academy has been slow. In fact, there are still first ever awards given to this very day. At the 92nd Academy Awards, South Korean film Parasite won Best Picture making it the first international film to win this award and became the first film to not only win Best Picture, but also Best International Film. While progress has been slow, Joe and I hold out hope for the future. Now I want to look at categories that no longer exist. One of these categories was the Academy Award for Best Assistant Director. It was first awarded in 1933 to assistant directors at all of the major studios, and it didn't refer to any specific films. The award was discontinued after 1937. One of my favorite discontinued awards was the Academy Juvenile Award, given to a child star from 1934 to 1960. Notable winners include Shirley Temple, who was the first winner, Deanna Durbin, Mickey Rooney, Judy Garland, and Margaret O'Brien. The award wasn't given every year, but it was still nice nonetheless. There have been special awards given, such as the Academy Honorary Award, which is given to those who have a lifetime's worth of incredible work, the Jean Hirschholt Humanitarian Award, awarded to those who have gone above and beyond for humanitarian causes, and my personal favorite, the Irving G. Thalberg Memorial Award, given to a producer who has had a consistent body of successful work. This award to me is the hardest to get, as it is not presented every year. Irving Thalberg himself produced over 500 films during his short life, and many have become true classics. For example, some films include Grand Hotel, 
China Seas, Camille, Mutiny on the Bounty, and The Good Earth. Winners of the Irving G. Thalberg Memorial Award include Daryl F. Zanuck and Hal B. Wallace, who both won twice. Zanuck's son Richard D. Zanuck, Walt Disney, Samuel Goldwyn, Billy Wilder, Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, Clint Eastwood, Warren Beatty, and Francis Ford Coppola. The Gene Hersholt Humanitarian Award has been given to people like Samuel Goldwyn, Bob Hope, Gregory Peck, Frank Sinatra, Rosalind Russell, Lou Wasserman, Charlton Heston, Audrey Hepburn, Elizabeth Taylor, Paul Newman, Quincy Jones, Oprah Winfrey, Harry Belafonte, and Debbie Reynolds. Before we wrap this up, I want to make a note of a few key details about the Academy's history. To do this, I'm going to cite another portion of the essay on the Academy's website, and I quote, The first was in 1938, when destructive floods all but washed out Los Angeles and delayed the ceremony one week. In 1968, the award ceremony was postponed from April 8th to April 10th out of respect for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who had been assassinated a few days earlier, and whose funeral was held on April 9th. In 1981, the awards were postponed for 24 hours because of the assassination attempt on President Ronald Reagan. In 2003, when U.S. forces invaded Iraq the Thursday before the telecast, the show went on, but the red carpet was limited to the area immediately in front of the theater entrance. The red carpet bleachers were eliminated, and the bulk of the world's press was not able to photograph or interview guests as they arrived. In 2004, the red carpet returned in all its glitz and glamour." Unquote. The other thing I want to note are the people that have been expelled from the Academy. There are only four people who have ever been expelled. Actor Carmine Carity was the first for copyright infringement. He was accused of illegally leaking the film Something's Gotta Give on the internet. It was discovered it came from Carity though he was cleared of being paid for films like this. Nevertheless, the Academy expelled him for violating his agreement to safeguard their screeners. The second person expelled was producer Harvey Weinstein, after allegations came to light that more than a dozen women had accused the producer of either sexually harassing, assaulting, or raping them. Dozens more would come forward and Weinstein was expelled. The third was comedian Bill Cosby, who was convicted of sexual assault in 2018. And the fourth was director Roman Polanski, who was convicted in 1977 of unlawful sexual intercourse with a minor. To end this, I want to try and convince everyone that while the Academy at times is out of touch with the public, winning an Oscar is still one of the greatest achievements someone can win. It's seen, rightly so, as an extraordinary feat and that the individual went above and beyond in either their performance or their technical work. Always advocate for positive change, including more diversity in their voting process and wins, and always view the Academy Awards as what they're supposed to be, a celebration of the previous year's achievement in filmmaking. The last thing I want to note is that the Academy plans to open a museum called the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures on December 24th, 2020. I hope you all enjoyed learning more about the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and learned a lot. You can always check out more of their history on their website at www.oscars.org. If you liked the video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Also, please become a patron on our Patreon page. The links to the show's social media pages will be in the description box below. We're looking forward to bringing all of you more amazing content. Thank you from both Joe Lewis and myself, and we'll see you again soon.